Hi everyone, I'm Ina Takayama. Nice to meet you. Today, I'm excited to share some techniques using Excel and Python that will make your everyday tasks more convenient. You might not know this, but Excel actually comes with built-in Python functionality, even though I've never tried it before. So, I'll be writing some code to operate Excel. If you stick around until the end, I'm sure it'll be really helpful for you in the future. Let's get started. Thanks for joining me. Hey there. Great job on the narration. Today, we're leaving everything to Takayama, who's been learning Excel since elementary school. Do your best. We're cheering you on. All right, we're all set. We'll be here to support you, so just keep going without worry. So, what exactly are you doing on this screen right now? Oh, Miss Mamu and Dad, hello? Please go easy on me. Actually, I'm using Python to effortlessly control Excel while monitoring my home LAN in real time. I'll show you the code later, so please be sure to check it out. Just between us, be extra cautious about using this program in public spaces like Starbucks, and absolutely no abusing the monitoring functionality. Well, I mean, these days you can even check it out on smartphone apps. No, no, I'm not suggesting it's meant for misuse, but it's true that sometimes it can send out some strange stuff. AirDrop uses Bluetooth to detect nearby devices and also leverages Wi-Fi signals to transfer files directly. This means that smartphones can exchange data even without a public Wi-Fi network or specialized communication environments like those on bullet trains. All right, now that we've got that covered, let's move on to the actual implementation method. We'll place the script in an easily accessible folder. For the video, I'll keep it in a folder called LAN on the C drive. Looks like there's a missing Python package. It seems VS Code is letting me know. Right. For those of you who don't want to clutter your computer with unnecessary files after installing packages, I recommend creating a Python virtual environment. In the video, I'll first demonstrate this method and then show you how to activate the virtual environment. Actually, when you use VS Code, the virtual environment starts up automatically. However, to accommodate those using PowerShell as well, I'll also explain how to activate it via the command line. Indeed, not everyone uses VS Code. I really appreciate that consideration. Even someone like me who isn't the best at reading the room can figure this out. All right then, let's move on. VS Code will let you know which packages are missing, so I'll go ahead and install them. However, when it comes to PyWin32, the module required for automating Excel on Windows, you'll need to decide on your own whether to install it. PyWin32 is used for automating Excel on Windows, so don't forget to install it. Oh, by the way, that extra window that popped up earlier might have been caused by your antivirus software being active. Don't worry, it's perfectly fine if the code doesn't make any sense at all. Unless there's a specific reason not to, it's a good idea to upgrade PIP and keep it up to date. Everything's set up, so I'm going to run the script now. Hey, hey, it looks like the Excel file is missing. Did you forget it? Don't worry, the script will automatically create it for you. Of course, you can also design it in Excel beforehand, which might actually be more common. That approach makes things visually easier to understand. No way. So the opening Excel file is generated by the script? That's awesome. That's right. With just a single piece of code, an Excel file like this gets created automatically. The first time it runs, it might take a bit longer to check the IP addresses within the same segment, but a simple tweak in the code can easily handle that. No excess sheets are created. Instead, the system deletes unnecessary ones and generates exactly three sheets. This structure is exactly the same as the Excel file introduced at the beginning. I'm amazed. I had no idea this was possible. Not only does it create the sheets, but the design looks perfectly consistent too. By the way, for subsequent startups, is it okay to use the same method as the initial one? This is just for viewing. Feel free to delete it or you can run the script as is. When it comes to Excel, the initialization of COM objects often fails, but this worked out really well. We avoided that issue by launching a blank Excel instance. In theory, you could run everything in just one window, but that would be a real hassle. 
Well, since it only produces a blank Excel file, it's not a big deal. Next, I'll make the Network Monitoring tool accessible through your browser. Really? So it can be viewed in a browser too? In other words, can I assume that the same content from the Excel file will be displayed in the browser? I'd love that. Yes, it will be displayed with almost the same design. Plus, it updates automatically without needing any manual refresh. So let's get started. First, we'll delete the previous file and set up a new script in the same folder. This time there are two scripts and just like before, we'll install any missing packages. So, it's alright if the code inside doesn't make any sense, right? I don't understand programming at all. Well, if you're one of those people who insist on knowing every little detail, you'll have to study up. But thankfully, Generative AI is here to lend a hand. I keep hearing that these days you don't even need to be able to code. In fact, while I was working on this video, I got word that one particular Generative AI just got upgraded. If you request a code revision, I think it could turn out even better. I see your point, but the reality is that without a basic level of knowledge, even asking questions to a generative AI can be challenging. Plus, there are still people who don't make use of these handy tools. It goes to show that we humans really need to put in some effort. That's absolutely true. Learning is key. Even if your knowledge is a bit shallow, having a broad base can help support you through the toughest parts. I wonder if this is the kind of era we're stepping into. That's exactly right. To be honest, even I struggle to understand some parts of the programming. Take a look. This is an example of something that can be done without any programming knowledge at all. All right, while we were talking, the script is now ready to run. Oh, I see. This script seems to work the same way as the previous one. I'm curious about the other script. Will that one be executed too? Yes, I intend to run it now. It does need to be executed. This script will be run by launching PowerShell. Since VS Code can't open multiple windows in the same folder, I've decided to use PowerShell this time. By the way, I found that you can bypass this restriction by changing VS Code's settings, but that just turns out to be more hassle than it's worth. This script uses an open source web application framework called Streamlit. I'll give you a brief explanation of it later. Oh, an error popped up. I forgot to activate the virtual environment. Let me take a moment to explain Streamlit. As shown in the video, it's the perfect tool for lazy folks like me. Just writing Python code lets you effortlessly build a web app. I might mention this again later, but I really appreciated how Streamlit keeps the code so concise. So does that mean even someone as clueless about programming as me can pull it off with the help of generative AI? Just kidding. Nah, I think it works just fine on its own. Let's wrap up the explanation here and move on to the hands-on part. Streamlit automatically launches your browser as soon as you enter the command. Oh, so if it opens in the browser, does that mean I can access it from another computer? That's right. Just like before, it only takes a bit longer the first time. Oh my, an Excel file has been created. What's written in it? This is just because it doesn't really focus on Excel. It only records the current state. In fact, the log file might be even more important. What's amazing about this code is that it achieves all of this functionality in just a few lines. Looking closely at the code, it's really true. It seemed lengthy at first, but that's probably because of all the comments. If you tried to implement the same functionality using a typical web framework, you'd need a lot more code. I see, that makes sense. So one of the reasons Streamlit allows you to build web applications with such simple code is that it already comes with many built-in features. Yes, thanks for summing that up. It seems that Streamlit is primarily designed for desktop use, but since it operates as a responsive web application, it can also be accessed from a smartphone. Although, in some cases, you might need to adjust the layout. Thanks for the extra info. Next. I'll introduce code for logging data, in addition to monitoring. This data can be viewed in real time, but I'm saving it in CSV format. Wow, I see. 
Some people actually need the file recorded in CSV format. You've really thought of everything. Actually, I didn't plan it at all. It just happened by chance. By only logging when there's a change in the device's state, we capture important changes while keeping the log file size down. With the combination of Excel and Python, errors tend to occur due to file formatting and complex internal structures. On the other hand, CSV format is text-based and simple, which makes reading and writing data much easier and significantly reduces the occurrence of errors. I see. So for those who are well-versed in this technology, they can create incredibly sophisticated and awesome apps with just a few lines of code. Exactly. That's why continuous learning is so important. By keeping up with my studies, I've been able to fully understand the insights provided by generative AI and respond accordingly. In other words, it's our daily learning that makes it possible to build applications that harness these cutting-edge technologies. But seriously, isn't it tough to deal with technology you've never even touched before? I actually tried it once, and it just ended up being completely baffling. When you venture into completely uncharted technological territory, it's natural to feel confused and face difficulties at first. However, those obstacles can be gradually overcome through learning and practice. For example, by starting with the basics, slowly deepening your understanding and actually writing and testing code, you often find that you get used to the new technology before you know it. Taking on a challenge is a valuable way to grow, so I believe it's well worth taking that first step into the unknown, without fear. Our channel may not always bring you the absolute latest updates, but why not learn and grow together? Besides, even if there were the newest info, making videos takes time. So I gave up on that. Alright, that's it for today. See you next time.